This is me, the Undead Viking, and this is Mystic Scrolls. Mystic Scrolls is a dice game in which each player is playing a student at a mythical wizarding college that's totally not Hogwarts, uh, where uh, each of the players uh, has snuck into this forbidden tower of arcane knowledge, and uh, when they've gone in there, all of a sudden they've kind of woken up uh, the scrolls, which are like kind of a living, breathing entity, these these scrolls, and the scrolls are, start, are starting to fly about the room and so you and each of the other players are trying to snag these scrolls and casting spells on each other trying to prevent them uh, from doing what they're trying to do well you're trying to basically amass the most knowledge and along the way you're going to be um, trying to knock each other out technically uh, because if you're the last wizard standing you will then collect um, alls the knowledges, if you will. So uh, let me show you how uh, Mystic Scrolls is played, and then we'll come back here, and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, cool. All right, this is Mystic Scrolls, and I've gone ahead and set up this game for just, like, this person right here. I don't have the other uh, three people at the table for the four-player game that I would technically sort of be playing in front of you here in just a few moments. But uh, each person is going to get a wizard that has just a picture, and, like, this is Albus. And then he has his stamina or life that's over here. You'll notice that the 35 is in red, and that is what you start out with. Now, this is, uh, I think this is an older prototype because um, it, you're not dying in this game. You're like a student and uh, you, the damage you take is, is like uh, stamina type of situation so you kind of get knocked unconscious. Uh, the other uh, people are um, Alanora, uh, Paravel, and Celestina. Now each person starts with three spells to their repertoire and so like, you know, so like, you know, each one, Celestina's three spells, uh, her three spells, and finally uh, like his three spells. And each one of them, depending upon uh, their character, uh, has kind of like a distinct brand of spells. Like, uh, she's like a pyromancer, so she does like a ton, you know, she's pretty much single-minded, you know, as far as uh, there's not a lot of flexibility in their spells. Um, Paravel here, he's he's more about protecting himself than he is about offense, and so so they each have like kind of their own special thing. Uh, Albus here um, relies on some randomness to what he does. Uh, like, so you're not always sure, even though when you cast a spell, exactly um, how good that spell is going to be when he casts it. But anyway, so each person's going to get um, five of these dice. Now this is obviously, these are dice with just uh, stickers on them. Um, this is a, a prototype that I was sent. So the dice will have like the, the symbols on them, uh, etched on them. So you don't have to uh, you know, think about having these paper stickers on them. Uh, but, and then there's this, uh, this, this deck of scrolls here. Because remember, you're in like the scroll room of the school that you're at. And uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to claim this particular uh, scroll. You shuffle these and you turn it over. And so, like, the one scroll that's flying around that we're trying to grab right now is the lightning bolt scroll. And you can see that there's those three lightning bolts and those two air symbols. All the symbols on the dice are different uh, elements that they're, that they're going for. So, you're going to start... One person's going to say, one, two, three, go. And everybody's going to take their five dice and they're going to roll them. Now, there's a couple things. So, you... When you roll your dice, you have, as, after you get done rolling them, um, you have the option at that point of three things. Um, you, and mind you, this is all real time. This isn't like one person rolls the dice, makes their decision, the next person goes, makes their decision. Everybody's rolling their dice. After you roll, you have the option of re-rolling any or all the dice, doesn't matter what you want. If you are able to match up a spell that is out there on the board, you're allowed to put your dice on the spot. So in this case, I don't. Uh, I don't have like the, what's needed. You know, so here is um, the, the you know Albus's card gamble spell. So you can see there's like these two uh, like water and one air, and then there's like one uh, water over here. Now th this is like two separate types of spells. So just keep that in mind. This isn't all one spell. But I, I wasn't able to uh, get either of those. Now, you can't put, like, one, uh, like, here's, like, it needs a fire. You can't put one on there and keep it on there. You have to 
have the entire spell uh, rolled for before you can put it on. Now, that doesn't mean you can't you know, put that one aside like this and then re-roll some dice here, hopefully get a blue one. Of course I didn't, so then you're rolling again and this is of course that moment where everybody's like, you know, racing along. Okay, so now I finally have, so I have Surprise Gift. And Surprise Gift will actually heal me. That's like the ability of it, you can see here. Um, it has down here, uh, like you're gonna roll a die after it. On a one through three, it heals one. On a four through six, it'll heal three. So you'll see that. Now if I have two blue ones over here, I could use that side of it. And you can only pick one side, remember. You can pick that side of it, and then it would be on a one through three, it's two. So it's a little better healing. But in this case, if I go ahead and I put those on there, bam. Those are locked on there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take dice over here and replenish my pool so that, that are in there. Now, if there's ever a time after you've cast a spell, you want to claim uh, dice that are located in the dice pool, and remember, this is accessed by everybody, so I'm going to be taking those. If you ever are trying to get dice out of there and you can't get dice, you may, you don't have have to, but you may at that point um, say stop, in which case then everybody stops rolling dice and you move right into the casting phase. But, you know, you could, I mean, like, let's say you're trying to collect these two, you couldn't, but you still have spells you can cast with three dice, you could keep rolling just three dice trying to get that one last spell uh, cast prior to that. But so, obviously, so the goal here is to get spells cast and get them on there as quickly as possible. Now, the other thing you can do is you can go for the scroll that is available. So if you're trying to get, and once again, you can't put the dice on there until you actually have uh, the correct dice. So you're gonna roll, and so of course I got, I, here I got, actually I got two of the the water, and so let's see, I'm, oh, a lightning bolt. Let's see if I can get two more lightning bolts. And this will probably take a while, so I apologize. Oh, one more. Ooh, this might not take as long as I thought. There you go, bam. So then you'd go like this. All right, so now you've, if you have the right the, the right dice for that location, uh, I never rolled dice that well. Uh, you say stop, and that is because you can only have one thing. And so not only do you get to then claim this scroll, because remember that's what you're doing. You, you've broken into this like scroll, uh, you know, like area, this, this, this like, um, this, place of knowledge within your school, but not only do you get to claim that, but you're going to be able to cast that spell on your turn as well. So now you hit stop, and, and like, and so everybody else stops rolling dice, they're going to look at all their cards, and they're going to start casting their spells. And so um, this all happens simultaneously, uh, you know, so you, it, it is very possible that, like, um, people could uh, take damage at the same time that knocks everybody out, uh, but just Bear in mind, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to heal. So you're going to go ahead and look at the different spells. And so if I had done exactly that, so I have this one healing spell, um, I would go, I roll this one die, and if I get a four through six, I heal three. If I heal one through three, I heal one. So I do that, so I'd heal three. Um, you have a maximum health of 40, so you can't go above that. So just if you were to hit 43 or whatever, you just stop at 40. And then you go ahead and you look at your uh, things that cause damage. So this one's just a flat damage where it causes four damage. And you do your damage always to the wizard on your right. So And so like in this case, this wizard over here is going to be attacking me. I'm attacking this wizard over here. Uh, so you're going to be going through that process of taking you know, attacking and not trying to, like, as I said, knock those other wizards out, because if they're knocked out, then they're out of the game, and they're unable to win. All right, so uh, then after all that is done, you then take the next card after, you know, you, if you, if anybody, you know, is knocked unconscious or whatever, you, they're, they're out. And, and also, I should mention that um, when you have, like, down to three players, you're going to take three dice out of the pool, and then you're going to take dice out of out of the pool again when you get down to two. So then you turn the next card over. So in this case, what we have, we have the uh, Potion of Ambiguity. And so you can see it either does, uh, either 
uh, does three damage or heals two, your choice. And so you're gonna put that there and you're gonna do the whole thing over again. And roll dice, roll dice, and you take your dice, you keep five to roll, but then you take all the other dice and put them back into the pool. And you're gonna roll dice and do the exact same thing again and so on and so forth. Uh, if you are the last wizard uh, standing, obviously, uh, you're going to win. It is very possible, and it's happened for us, where, like, uh, when you're down to two wizards, and because you're both attacking and defending, like, basically against each other, it is very possible that both of you could get knocked out at the exact same time. If that happens, very hilariously, uh, nobody wins, and everybody is, like, thrown out of school. No, you're sent to detention. You're not thrown out of school. Uh, you're sent to detention because you're all unconscious and you uh, miss your classes the next day because uh, uh, you are uh, been battling all night, which of course is, is funny. The only other thing I have to say, it is quite possible if like, remember, if you're not claiming this particular uh, uh, scroll, uh, could happen uh, when you are rolling the dice because of the fact that you just run out of the dice that are located in the pool. If that's the case, you do discard uh, that, uh, that spell and just Pull, pull the next one over, and then you use that one instead. You don't keep the same one uh, for the second turn. So, so there you go. Uh, that's Mystic Scrolls. Um, it is. Uh, if, if if you're into dice games and you're into like the real time, uh, like frenetic way of playing the dice, which I, I which I am. I like I like that that feeling of impending doom. If you're hoping that you're rolling better than everybody else, um, it is a lot of fun. And uh, I think just because of the theme, because of the art and everything like that, it's, it's it, it just lends itself uh, to like a weird kind of energy uh, that kind of goes around the table and, and it, it's like, uh, you know, it's hard to explain, but when you're like rolling dice, rolling dice, rolling dice, rolling dice, and you're also kind of looking left and right and across the table to see what where other people are at and how far they're getting and whether or not they're being lucky, or and then you hear the cursing and the cheering as people, and then like, of course, like there's that scream, stop, you know, like when they're ready to go. Um, it's just, it's that it has a sort of electricity at the table uh, that, that that's hard to match. But let me talk about that and more uh, in my final thoughts. I've had a couple of people tell me that I've got a good uh, wizard beard. I wish it was a little bit longer, like one of those really, really long ones. But regardless, um, I do dig uh, the fantasy theme of this game. I do dig the whole wizarding thing going on. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I kind of like uh, these types of games. As I said, the electricity at the table is everybody, and the, the clattering. I mean, that's the big thing. I mean, admittedly, I have a table cover here, so when I'm rolling these dice, you know, you don't really hear the clattering. But um, if you are at a table that like you know more of a plastic or a wood table you'll hear the dice you know clattering off the table here let me peel these back here real quick here so this is you know like what you hear as you're playing you hear this you know over and over again and that is like one of those weird things too where it's like every single moment of you like trying to like grab the dice and put them on the right uh, card and uh, putting like, you know, and moving things around and trying to get things and collecting them out of the pool. It's like every second wasted, you know, wasted doing that. It, it just adds to that kind of frenetic pace and that paranoia you feel about like, you're just not getting enough spells cast. And, and then of course, when you hear somebody else, stop, if you're not the person, uh, there's that like moment of relaxation where you, then you look and then you start glancing around the table and you see how much damage somebody's gonna be doing, somebody's gonna be doing to you. And you kind of start figuring that out in your head, you know, whether or not you're able to like live through it. And, and it's just, it's one of those things where like, yes, the game is pretty straightforward and there isn't like a, a lot of um, like, I wouldn't say like sheer complexity to it. I mean, because there is a little bit of, you know, like, you know, do I, do I, you know, go after the scroll right now? Uh, you know, do I try to cast my spells? You know, there's, there's some, there's some decisions to be made. This isn't just you know, like an activity where you're rolling dice. You actually have to make, you know, like some wise choices, if you will. Um, but you, know, because of the fact that the game is pretty straightforward and it is, you know, like, one of those like direct confrontation type situations between the players um you know it's just it's just fun and it isn't trying to do anything else but just be fun so and it is <laughs> it's it, it's it's a great deal of fun and i've had fun with it with both uh you know my my, my daughter her and i playing one-on-one -on -one, um and then also like i said just 
playing with my gaming group and playing with you know, like the guys that I've grown up with that we definitely have some deep seated grudges and highly competitive uh, that you know grudge matches of this were, were very common uh, recently at our at our gaming table. So so there you go. Uh, that is Mystic Scrolls. If you dig dice games, I think you're really going to like this one. Go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those to the best of my ability. Uh, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I'm the Unknown Viking, telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.